Hello there. Are you a new FNAF fan and are overwhelmed by the mass amount of games, books and theories? Oh, and have you found yourself being drowned in the sea of lore yet? Unfortunately, I can't help you in that sense, but I most certainly could help you survive every single terrifying night at Freddy's. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today, providing you with tips and strategies to help you survive five nights at Freddy's. Consider me your secondary phone guy, if you like. Now, before we dive straight into the facts, let me give you a basic rundown on how this series is going to pan out. I'm going to split this series into a three-parter because going through every single game in one video will be quite ambitious. In this very video, I'm going to go through every FNAF game from FNAF 1 to Sister Location, excluding FNAF World. In part 2, I'm going to go through FNAF World, Pizza Sim, and UCN. And in the final part, I'm going to go through FNAF VR, FNAF AR, and Security Breach. Although this series is more so for newer fans, if you are an older fan, certainly still do stick around. I've been obsessed with this series for 7 years now and I've devoted countless hours into playing these games so I certainly know the ins and outs of them so I'm fairly confident that you're gonna learn something new from this even if you're an older fan. Now that's enough of the general talk, let's get started with Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Even if you just got into the series yesterday I'm sure you'd know the basics of what you're meant to do in FNAF 1. Survive from 12 to 6am, manage your power and close doors and check cameras. You have the night watch and you're being hunted down by the four animatronics Freddy, Bonnie, Chica and Foxy and the additional fifth animatronic Golden Freddy but the chances of him triggering is literally 1 in 100,000 but just in case you do happen to find him you can get rid of him by flipping up your camera once he's in the office. Before I provide you with the optimal strategies let me do a rundown of the AI and mechanics of all the four animatronics. Firstly we've got Bonnie who's active on night 1 from 2am onwards. Bonnie always begins on camera 1A, which is the show stage, and once he leaves that position, he will never return there for the remainder of the night. After he leaves the show stage, the first position he will go to is either cam 5 or 1B. When Bonnie is on one of these two said cameras, he can choose to move between these two rooms, or he can jump directly to cam 2A, which is the hallway. Whatever path he chooses is up to chance. When in the hallway, the next move Bonnie will make will either be cam 3 or 2B. And once he's in one of these cameras, you really want to get your guard on. Because when in one of these two cameras, the next move will either be returning back to the hallway or he'll appear at your door. Once he leaves one of these two cameras, don't bother to check the hallway because you must be quick. So quickly pull your camera down, flicker those lights and if you see his face accompanied by that iconic stinger sound, simply shut the door. You can tell if Bonnie's still at the door or not by the reflection when you flicker the light. Once he leaves the door, he will always return to cam 1B. And with that, the same cycle continues. Now there's an entire system behind this, and I'm not going to tell you because it'll most certainly overwhelm you, but just know that once you prevent Bonnie, you're safe for a minimum of 15 seconds. Chica works almost the same as Bonnie. She also can go to six cameras and starts in the show stage. The final stage is cam 4B, and after that, she'll either move back to cam 4A or she'll be present at the right door. Works the exact same as Bonnie. I'm not going to comment any more on Chica because she's practically the same as Bonnie except moving on the opposite side. She moves on the right side of the pizzeria and shows up at the right door whilst Bonnie is all on the left. Up next is old Foxy the pirate and just like Bonnie and Chica he is active from night 1 and onwards. However unless you don't check the camera at all he won't become a visible threat most likely until night 2. Foxy is certainly easier to understand in the sense that he is mainly only on one camera. However as you progress through the game he certainly becomes more irritating. Foxy is always in Cam 1C, which is Pirate Cove, and he has three stages before he leaves Pirate's Cove. What you want to do to prevent old Foxy from leaving Pirate's Cove is just to check on him the right amount of times. Not too frequently, but not too little either. This sounds simple, and yes, you're right, it is. And it is not much of a problem in the first few nights, but as the game goes on, Foxy becomes really, really luck-based. So, in the instance when Foxy does leave Pirate's Cove, what you want to do is quickly go over to Cam 2A and you'll see Foxy pelting down the hallway at full speed. All you want to do is close the left door and as soon as you hear that banging sound effect, know that you're safe and sound and Foxy has returned to Pirate Cove. Last but not least is main man Freddy Fazbear. Unlike the other three animatronics here active from the very beginning of the game, Freddy Fazbear isn't active until night 3, unless you run out of power, but let's not talk about that. Just like Bonnie and Chica, Freddy Fazbear begins on the stage and he can't leave the stage until Bonnie and Chica have first. The good thing about old Mr. Fazbear is that he always follows a persistent pattern. That being cam 1B, 7, 6, 4A and then 4B. Every movement can be determined by Freddy's laugh. And since Freddy always follows a repetitive pattern, what you really just want to do is every run you play, every time you hear the fifth laugh, 
starting onwards when you hear that fifth laugh just keep closing the right door every time you use the camera i only say use the camera because freddy can never enter your office unless you flip up the camera i know that may be a bit of information overload and i know that may sound a little complicated but hey let me help you out here by providing you with some strategies which will help make things a lot easier this first strategy is very easy to do and it involves you just doing a repetitive cycle which helps manage all four of the animatronics. What you're going to want to do is at the beginning of the night go over to cab 1C which is Pirate Cove for Foxy and just stay there for the rest of the night. Now once you're stalling Pirate Cove you want to flip your camera down, check the left light, go over, check the right light and then close the right door and flip the camera up. The reason I say close the right door is because this manages Freddy. Now that you've flipped up the camera, instantly flip it back down. Open the right door, check the right light, go over, check the left light, and then go over, check the right light again, close the right door, and repeat the cycle. Since you're checking the left and right light so frequently, that means you don't need to worry about where Bonnie and Chica are on the cameras because you'll catch them at the doors anyways. This is personally my favorite FNAF 1 strategy, and once you get into the swing of things, it's really easy to keep following the cycle. Just one thing I'll remind you is that remember, every single time you're going to flip up the camera, make sure you have the right door closed. If you mess this up just once, chances are you'll be killed by Freddy. Another great strategy to use is the Cam 4B Freddy stall. You can lock Freddy in Cam 4B for the rest of the night as long as you stay on that camera. This means that you don't need to close the right door every time you decide to use the camera. However, by doing this strategy, something you need to ensure you do is to occasionally go over to Pirate's Cove and check Foxy's progress. Every time you're going to go and check on Foxy, make sure the right door is closed because by leaving Cam 4B, then Freddy can move. And that's it for FNAF 1 strategies. Personally, I do prefer the Pirate's Cove strategy as I think it's easier to get into the swing of things with that strategy. However, with the Cam 4B Freddy stall, then you're saving more power. Up next is Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which has a whopping 11 animatronics, so I'm definitely not going to go through every animatronic's movement patterns. Because if I did do so, we'd be here all bloody day, and as you'll see soon, the optimal strategy doesn't even require you to know where they are on the cameras. I will, however, do a very quick overview on where all the animatronics attack from. Firstly, we've got the four toy animatronics who attack from the left and right vents. On the left side, you've got Balloon Hello. Boy, who is indicated Hi. by four laughs. <laughs> and you've got Toy Chica, who isn't indicated by any sound effect. You're just gonna have to keep checking there. Over on the right side, you've got Mangle, who is indicated by that static sound. And Toy Bonnie, who you're just gonna have to check the right light to see. Toy Freddy and Withered Freddy attack from the hallway. And Toy Freddy has two phases before striking into the office. And Withered Freddy has one. Whenever one of these two set animatronics are in the hallway, whenever you flip up the camera, there's an opportunity for them to enter the office. Withered Bonnie and Withered Chica work practically the same as Toy Freddy and Withered Freddy, however, they attack from the vents, but you won't need to check the lights because whenever you flip up the camera, they can just pop into the office. Withered Golden Freddy will appear in the office slumped over in the left-hand side, just like Golden Freddy in FNAF 1. Every single animatronic I have listed this far are all managed by wearing the mask. The four animatronics that appear right in front of you and flicker the lights up being Toy Freddy, Withered Freddy, Withered Bonnie, and Withered Chica require really fast reflexes. If you fail to be fast enough, you're dead. Withered Golden Freddy, whenever he's in your office, you gotta put the mask on. If you use the flashlight, you're dead. And the four toy animatronics that, that strike from the left and right vent, if you flip up the camera when they're there, instead of putting the mask on and get rid of them, you're also dead. The only two animatronics I have not brought up yet are Withered Foxy and the Puppet, and they are the only two animatronics in FNAF 2 who aren't managed by the mask. Withered Foxy will occasionally appear standing in the hall, and what you must do is occasionally flicker the flashlight at him. This will prevent the man from jumping out at ya. Last but not least, we've got the Puppet, who requires constant attention because you've got a music box over in camera 11. What you must do is constantly check up on that and wind it up, because if it gets to the bottom, well, I think you know. Now yes, that sure is a lot of animatronics and quite a few different mechanics. And you'd be right in saying that things can certainly get stress inducing very, very quick. However, this easy to follow strategy will make things much, much easier. So what you're gonna wanna do is cam stall cam 11 for the entire night. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're constantly winding up the music box and you wanna flip the camera down, put the mask on instantly and then take it off, check the left vent, the hallway, the right vent, the hallway and then just keep repeating the cycle of winding up the music box and then as soon as you put the camera down instantly put on the mask this means that if withered freddy etc sneak in then you'll instantly get that reflex 
If Balloon Boy or Toy Chica is in your office, wear the mask for about two or three breathing sound effects. Take it off and check if they're still there. For Mango, you'll know if she's gone if the static sound stops. And Toy Bonnie, he like slides into your office with the flickering lights. Again, I know that must sound complicated, but I'm hoping that the gameplay that's being shown on the screen helps you understand how the strategy goes down. And although it does look easy to do, the cycle is very easy to do, trust me, things still are very, very tight and difficult, especially on the infamous 1020 mode. Up next, we've got Five Nights at Freddy's 3, which shifts from 11 animatronics that can kill you to just one. Well, things aren't that simple, because there is the addition of six phantom animatronics, which I will get to in a moment. When I played FNAF 3 for the first time in 2015, I was definitely quite confused, and it is safe to say that it's a tad bit more complex than FNAF 1 and 2, so I'm going to go through the basics of it first. Okay, so firstly we've got the office. Over to your left, we've got the maintenance panel. I'll comment more on that in a moment. Let's start off simple by the reintroduction of the camera system. Once you go over to the right side of your office, you'll be able to lift up your camera. This is what you're going to use to track the location of the single animatronic in Fazbear's Fright, that being Springtrap. And what you're going to have to be doing throughout the night is using the audio lures, which you can see on the camera there, to lure Springtrap away from your location. Another tactic that Springtrap will use is by crawling through the vents. You can see right underneath the play audio, there's a vent system, which you can use to seal off the vents that Springtrap's in to prevent them from reaching your office. Now that's just the basics of hoarding off Springtrap. Now let's comment more on that maintenance panel. If you go over to the left side of your office, you'll be able to boot up this maintenance panel and you can see there's audio devices, camera system and ventilation. By clicking on any of these labeled buttons or reboot all, you'll be able to reboot the systems. Occasionally throughout the night, the camera systems, the audio lures and the ventilation will go off and will require you to go over to the maintenance system to reboot them. So, let's quickly talk about what is it that sends these systems offline. Firstly, we've got the audio devices. You can only use your audio lure a set amount of times before it will go offline. This differs depending on the night. Okay, now this one should be obvious because the camera system will go offline once the camera is used for too long. And last but not least, we've got the ventilation system. There are two different ways in which the ventilation can go offline. One of the ways the ventilation system will go offline is when you spend too much time just staying in the office. The ventilation can go offline and for time spent sitting in the office. However, when you're using the maintenance panel or the camera system, the ventilation can't naturally go offline. The other way the ventilation system can go offline is by being jump scared by four of the different phantom animatronics. You really, really want to watch out for the ventilation because once the ventilation goes offline, not only will you blank out quite occasionally and blur red lights will flash, you'll start hallucinating and you can see multiple spring traps so you won't know which one's the real one. Now, let's talk about the phantom mechanics before we go ahead and talk about those optimal strategies. Firstly, we've got Phantom Freddy. So occasionally, Phantom Freddy will appear at the window walking by. The way to get rid of him is to either have your maintenance panel or camera up. If you stall in the office for too long, once Phantom Freddy's walk past the window, he'll eventually duck down, resulting in jump scare. You can tell when Phantom Freddy's there and when he's left by that eerie ambience that plays when he spawns. However, this ambience plays throughout different other occurrences in the game, such as Springtrap being in Cam 5 or below, being in the office, or when Phantom Chica is triggered. Up next is Phantom Chica. Now, Phantom Chica will occasionally spawn on the arcade machine in Camera 7. You'll be able to tell she's there by her face being present on the arcade machine. All you want to do is not stare at that camera while her face is on there for too long, or else she'll be waiting for you the next time you go over to the left side of the office. You can make her face disappear from the screen by flipping down your camera and flipping it back up again. Phantom Foxy is next, who will occasionally appear at the left side of the office. Every time you flip your camera down, you're going to go over to the maintenance panel. Be careful, because if you keep maneuvering to the left, he'll leap at you. The way to avoid him is to simply just move over to the right again, flip the camera up, and flip it down again. That will despawn Phantom Foxy. Phantom Balloon Boy's face will occasionally appear in one of the cameras. Simply to get rid of him is just be fast, flip the camera down, flip it up again, or change cameras. Up next is Phantom Mangle, who will occasionally spawn on camera 4, and simply to get rid of Phantom Mangle, just do the same as you would do with like Phantom Chica, flip the camera down, flip it back up, don't stare at it too long, or else he'll appear at the window making a horrid screeching sound and sending off the audio devices. And last but not least is the Phantom Puppet, who will occasionally appear on camera 8 in the form of the normal puppet. If you stare at it too long, then the Phantom Puppet will appear in your office, serving as a distraction for about 10 seconds, preventing you from using the maintenance panel or the camera system. 
Alrighty, so there's a rundown of all of the Phantom mechanics in FNAF 3. You want to be extra cautious with the four Phantom animatronics that cause ventilation errors, because if you get a ventilation error as a result of a Phantom jump scare, in many cases, Springtrap will just completely warp cameras, and in many cases, Phantom jump scares, just one of them could be an entire run ruiner. Okay, now let me introduce you to my favourite strategy for FNAF 3. So, as you may or may not know, there are certain cameras which correspond to the vents. So, if Springtrap is on, say, a certain camera, there's a specific vent he will always jump to when on that camera. So, with that in mind, here's what to do. Firstly, when you start the night, go over to the vent system and seal camera 12. And from there, for the rest of the night, what you really want to do is you want to keep Springtrap on camera 6, 7, and 8. Preferably 7, because then that means he can move to 8 and 6 and then you'll have to move again because 7's between the two so you can easily lure him back. The reason why I chose these three cameras specifically is because these three cameras all correspond to the cam 12 vent. Cam 8, 7 and 6, he will go to cam 12 vent from those three cameras. As opposed to other ones such as cam 9 which corresponds to only the vent which is cam 11 and cam 10 which corresponds to the only vent which is cam 14. And last but not least for FNAF 3, here's a couple of interesting, like, lures you can do. So firstly, when Spring Drop's in the first phase at the window, you can lure him directly from the window to camera 2. From cam 2, you can directly lure Spring Trap to cam 5, and from cam 5, you can directly lure Spring Trap to camera 8. So you may think you'd have to take a longer way, but you could actually bring Spring Trap from your office to camera 8 in just 3 lures. Alrighty, now we move on to Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Now, there isn't really an optimal strategy for this because you're really just checking left door, checking right door, check behind you, check closet, repeat. But I can give you some, like, tips and facts. Okay, so firstly, let's talk about the general phases of the three Nightmare animatronics, Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare Chica, and Nightmare Foxy. The three of them begin in a center spot behind the closet. So firstly, let's talk about Nightmare Bonnie and Nightmare Chica. They both work the exact same, except Nightmare Bonnie's on the left side and Nightmare Chica's on the right side. The only difference in the two is that sometimes Nightmare Chica will go to the kitchen. This is something that Nightmare Bonnie doesn't do. So you've got three notable phases. So firstly, you've got the one, of course, where they're in the center. The second phase is the one where they're in, like, the midpoint. And when you flash the light, when you catch them there, they duck back into the darkness. You may think this means that the Nightmare animatronics are making progress, however it's not. By doing this and getting this animation, this actually sends them back to the center spot. However, if you don't catch them at this phase, then they will move on to the next phase, which is most likely the phase where they're right outside the door and you gotta hear the breathing and close the door. The system behind Nightmare Foxy and how he makes it to the closet is very, very interesting. Okay, so I've already said how Nightmare Foxy begins in the center. However, after that, he will move to either the first phase on the left or the right side. And to get rid of him in this phase and prevent him from entering the next phase, you gotta run over that side and he will retreat and run to the opposite side. If you fail to catch him in this first phase and send him to the opposite side, then he will move into the next phase, which is the same as Nightmare Bonnie or Nightmare Chica, where basically he will lunge back into the darkness and retreat to the center. However, if you don't, then he will make a sprint to the closet. Another tip is that there are two distinct sound effects which determine whether Nightmare Fredbear or Nightmare is on the left or right side. Here, have a listen. Knowing these two sound effects is incredibly beneficial because then therefore you can just quickly run over to the door and close it without having to use the flashlight. It'll save you some time. This is especially good for going up against Nightmare because he only has one phase in the hallway as opposed to Nightmare Fredbear who has two. So when you use the flashlight up against Nightmare, there's a pretty high chance you'll die. And last but not least is the fact that you can be fun with Plush Trap and fun with Balloon Boy by just listening to audio cues. I'm not going to dwell on it right now, but I would like to direct you to this older video I made in 2020 which runs through how you can beat fun with Plush Trap and fun with BB really easily. Okay, and last but not least for this video, we've got Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. This game is entirely different than FNAF 1 to 4, as every night has you doing tasks that are entirely different. So what I'm going to do is give a basic rundown of what you do in each of these different stages in each night. Firstly, you've got night 1, which is extremely simple. It's literally impossible to die in this night. All you really want to do is follow hand units instructions. All your tasks in night one consist of just checking up on Baby, Ballora and Funtime Foxy and shocking them to bring them back to their normal place on stage. Once you're done with that, you can head home and enjoy some epic vampire cartoons.
Night 2 has a lot more of following instructions and carrying out simple tasks. However, there are three notable phases where you can actually die. Firstly, you've got under the desk where you're being attacked by the bitty babs while hiding under a desk. They'll attempt to open the door twice and you can beat this phase really, really easily by just holding the door down at the right hand side for the entire thing. The next part is where you have to make your way through Ballora Gallery so you can get to the breaker room. Ballora is out at this part and she is the one that can kill you. This phase is simple, all you want to do is just keep maneuvering forward. However, when you hear Ballora's music getting loud, just stay still. Last but not least is the breaker room phase where you gotta manually restart the power for these 8 rooms. Whilst doing this you're being attacked by Funtime Freddy. Advice I would give you is every time you're flipping up the panel don't do a reboot any more than 40%. Also worth knowing that any time you aren't rebooting a system, say you have it like up to about 50%, every time you're not rebooting it, it manually will go down. And something else I would totally recommend doing is only reboot the systems when Funtime Freddy is in the first phase of the breaker room. When Funtime Freddy moves, you can lure him back to this position by playing an audio lure. Night 3 has two sections where you can die. Firstly is when you're moving through Funtime Auditorium to make it to parts and service to fix Funtime Freddy. When in Funtime Auditorium, you're being hunted down by Funtime Foxy and you have a beacon for safety. What I do in this section is move forward about 6 steps, stop and use the beacon to see where Funtime Foxy is. If Funtime Foxy is close to you, stay still for a few seconds and then use your beacon again to make sure Funtime Foxy is gone. If so, then just keep moving 6 steps and repeat this. After you make it through Funtime Auditorium, you'll be up close and personal with Funtime Freddy in parts and service. For the most part, you're just following hand unit simple instructions, however, the last phase requires you to press Bon Bon's button on his chest. However, Bon Bon's constantly on the move and it can be quite difficult to catch him at this point. So what I do is just hang out in the top right corner and stay there for about 10 seconds. After that, just slowly move down and if you see him, just wait on him to spring up to the top and quickly run over and press his button. Night 4 is without a doubt the hardest part of the regular playthrough for Sister Location. This entire night consists of you being inside a spring lock suit and what you must do is try stay alive in there for 3 whole minutes while the spring locks deplete and the mini arenas are crawling up the suit. This part is in my opinion the most difficult part of Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location excluding the custom night DLC. Yes that's right I even think it tops off the 8 bit baby and entered private room endings. Okay, so first and foremost, what you want to do is as soon as the spring locks activate, you want to make sure that before the first mini arena starts crawling up the right hand side, you want to make sure you've got every single spring lock winded up to the top. In every phase, the first mini arena will always come from the right side. So what you want to do is every time you're going to the right side to wind up those spring locks, do it from the bottom so that you can go up at the same time that that mini arena is. And then what you want to do is when the mini arena is up at around the top not the very top but close to the top you want to wiggle that one off because when that mini arena on the right hand side gets to about the midpoint the one on the left side you know starts climbing up so what you can do is you can wiggle whenever the first mini arena is up around the top which is on the right hand side and this knocks out both the mini arenas it can take up to four to five wiggles to get rid of one of the mini arenas and every single time you wiggle a little bit of each spring lock winds down You'll also notice how there are mini arenas there crawling within the middle of the screen. Totally ignore those, they don't mean anything. 10 mini arenas will attack during this 3 minute night. 5 from the right side and 5 from the left side. Now you really only need to wiggle them off 5 times because remember, once the right hand side mini arena gets to about the midpoint of the suit, the left side one will spawn and you can wiggle them both. Between each phase of these two mini arenas, there will be quite a long break before the next one comes up, so this will give you time to wind up the spring locks. Now, what you definitely want to make sure you're doing, though, is between every phase, don't try and wind up every spring lock to the top. You'll be able to do that for the first phase or two, but after that, it's practically impossible. Because you've been wiggling more and the spring locks have wound down, and as the night progresses, the spring locks start naturally winding down faster. So by the time that you're at like the fourth wave of the mini arenas, you're really only going to want to be rounding up those spring locks to about halfway at that point or even less. You also got to know that if just one of the spring locks gets an entire 360 rotation without you winding it back, then you're instantly killed by a mini arena. And in most cases, by the time you get to around phase four, all of the spring locks are going to be pretty close to being through that 360 rotation. 
by that point, things get really, really intense and very, very stressful. But what you want to make sure you're doing is just keep winding them up at equal amount. You want to, you know, wind each of them an equal amount of time. You don't want to just wind one up for five seconds and then wind another one up for one second, you know. So as the night keeps on progressing, make sure that you're winding each one up less and less to keep and keeping them all equal. Eventually these three minutes will come to an end. Now, this is definitely one of the hardest parts of this location, the hardest part in my opinion. So don't expect to beat this in five or 10 minutes. This part is really difficult. So there will be some trial and error before you get this done, I'm sure. Now, thankfully, night fives are braver when compared to night four. So to kick things off, you're doing, you know, more listening instructions. You're listening to hand unit and circus baby and carrying out the tasks that they demand. Once you complete maintenance on Circus Baby and send her to the scooping room, you must then return to Funtime Auditorium. Here you can do two different routes. You can choose to follow Circus Baby's instructions and wind up in the scooping room where good old Michael Afton is going to become Ennard's skin suit. Or you could choose to fight off against Ennard by going the opposite direction and ending up in the private room. In the private room, you return to the classic Five Nights at Freddy's 1 formula, managing power, closing doors, and checking cameras. However, this time around, you've got just one foe, and that is Ennard itself. Ennard's movement can be determined by a variety of clanking metal sounds. Ennard can go to any of the rooms, but there are only three cameras that you really want to pay attention to. That being cam 1, and if he is in phase 2 on cam 1, that means he's right outside your left door and you need to shut that. Camera 2, which means if he's at the second phase on that camera, then he's right outside the right door. And camera 5, and if he's in the second phase on that camera, that means he's right outside in the vent. Now, sometimes Ennard won't make a sound effect when switching phases, so it's important to keep constant watch on these three cameras. And especially when it gets to 4am and onwards, because when it strikes 4, Ender becomes a lot more active. Alrighty, and there you have it. Now, there is also the 8-bit baby minigame with a secret Elizabeth Afton scoop ending. But for that, it's just really a matter of learning off what you're meant to do. I'd recommend just going and look at my older videos or someone else's videos to find out the pattern for that. So I think you get the idea now on why I've decided to split this into three parts because this is just going through five of the games and it's almost half an hour long. So if I were to go through every single FNAF game, this video would easily be over an hour long. So there you have it. I'll be back eventually to talk about the other games. I